Welcome to Liberty Ministries. We're glad you're with us today. This morning we're looking at the sermon that Christ gave in Matthew chapter 5. We're on verse 43. Now he's been telling all these people what the law said and what he was trying to convey, what it meant. He said that he did not come to change the law, but to fulfill the law. And sometimes that fulfillment means for us to understand the fullness of that law. Here he says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 43, You have heard it said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemy. Bless those that curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those that despitefully use you and persecute you. Let us pray. Father, we ask you to open our hearts and our minds into your word. And Lord, that your word take root in our very being. And Lord, that we may not understand all things, but Lord, that we can sense your presence and that you will guide us through them according to your will and your purpose. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Here he says that I want you to not just hate your enemy like the world does, but to love your enemy. He says that for those that curse you, who speak ill of you, bless them. So when you're driving down the road and somebody gives you the gesture from their hand, bless them. When somebody screams at you some profanity, bless them. When somebody calls you a name, bless them. God bless you instead. When somebody hates you, do good to them. You work with somebody who's always picking on you at work or at school, do good to them. And when they do something bad to you, do good unto them. He says, don't let it take root in you, do good to them. When somebody spitefully uses you, takes your recommendation and says that it's theirs, takes what you have said that is great and, and wonderful and calls it their own, those that persecute you, call you names and pick on you because you're a believer in Christ. When they spitefully use you and pick on you and persecute you, pray for them. And I know what you're thinking. I'll pray, I'll pray, God, get them. More than that, pray for them, that God saves them. I always pray, Lord, fix them, cure them, or kill them. We don't care which, Lord but your will be done. Because I know that in God's heart, he wants to fix them. And sometimes they don't want to be fixed. So Lord, take them to the point where they will want to be fixed. We always pray that God blesses them abundantly because we want to see God move in their life. We're not warring against other people. We're warring against the spirit that is with them, that comes against us. Because we're believers. Jesus says, I want you to pray for those that spitefully use you. In Proverbs chapter 25, verse 21, if your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For so you have heaped coals of fire on his head, and the Lord will reward you. Now, to us, we don't understand what that exactly means, so we think we're, we're going to get him to burn because, boy, we keep coals of fire up on him. What it really means is that you have given him life from your fire, put him in a pot, and you put him up on their head, and they carry him back to their camp where they can start their own fire. That's what keeping coals of fire up on their head was. It was taking from your substance to give them life so they could take it back to their camp and give their family life. He says, so when you do these things and you love your enemies and you care for them and when they're hungry, you feed them. When they're thirsty, you give them drink. You are giving coals of fire upon them so they can sustain their life. And the Lord will reward you. Oh, it's easy to act like the world. You don't like me, I don't like you. You hate me, I hate you. But God says, that's not the way we're supposed to be. We're to be like our Father. 
in Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, that you may see, or that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on evil and on the good. He sends his rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not the tax collectors do the same? If you uh, greet your brother only, what do you have or what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do that? So? He's saying, don't be like the world. Be different. God blesses those that are wicked and those that are righteous. He lets the sun come up on all of us. He sends his rain on the just and the unjust. Those that do good, those that do bad, he still, they still get the sunlight, they still get the rain. He's going to give them the blessings, whether they're good or bad. He says he wants us to be like him. So when others are bad, and we treat them just like those that are good. In other words, for those that are doing evil, pray for them. That's our good part. Don't cut them out. Pray for them. Those that are despitefully using you, pray for them. Encourage them. Lift them up in prayer. Those that curse you, bless them. Don't go picking on them and curse them back. Bless them. Give them from your Father to them. I was listening to Corey Ten Boone. She was telling the story of when she gave a speech about her time in the concentration camps in Germany. And as she was speaking, she noticed that one of the guys in the audience, she remembered him from the camp. He was a guard. At the end of the speech, everybody had come and gone, and he came walking up to her. He didn't say anything. He just took out his hand. And she said, she remembers telling God, God, I can't do this. This has to come from you. And she said, all of a sudden, her hand came up, and she shook his hand, and tears ran down his eyes as he walked away showing that you're forgiven, not through me, but through him. Blessing those, doing good to those that hate you or that did hate you. Giving them the grace that God has given to us to be like our Father. It is hard for us sometimes to be like our Father because we want to get back at him. We want to, we want to give evil for evil and good for good. And God says, you can't do that if you're going to be like your father. Your father gives good even when you're bad. How many times have you disobeyed God and God still blesses you? How many times have you ran away from God or cursed God because you felt that he was at fault and God still loved you and God still cared for you and God still provided for you? Why? Because he loved you. And God says, I want you to love your brothers like God loves them. I want you to care for those around about you. Oh, it's not always easy. Because sometimes people just like to push the issues. And they like to really get under your skin. And when they get under there like a bug, they just want to keep rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. And it just makes you more irritated. And God says, love them. Have patience with them. Encourage them to do what is right. That doesn't mean we become the doormat for them to run us over. It means that we do the best that we can and we love them the best that we can, but sometimes we have to give them up to God and say, God, it's your job. Take care of them. Don't be like the world. The world wants to pay people back. You do it to me, I'm going to do it to you. The world loves to quote the Bible when it says an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You do this to me, I'm going to do it to you. And they misquote it because we already know what that means. The Lord has already said, 
for an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth. That was what the law required. But he says, I want you to give grace. Not to give it to those. Not to recommend it for those. But to love them anyway. Then he says, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 1, Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. When you do something nice, don't expect something in return. When you give unto God, don't expect everybody to watch you go, oh, good job, good job. When you go to the church and you work at the church and you help out, don't expect everybody to go, oh, you're such a good worker. Because if that's what you're looking for, that is your reward. That's it. You got your pat on the back and you're, well, that's all you're going to get. But if you do it secretly, you just show up to help and don't say nothing about it, then God's going to reward you. When you give what God has laid on your heart and you give it without making a big hoodoo about it, God's going to reward you. In fact, Jesus went on and said, Therefore, when you do your charitable deeds, do not sound a trumpet before you as, you as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, that they may have glory from man. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. We see that the Pharisees and the Sadducees would make a big hoodoo about what they're doing. Oh, play the trumpet. Look what I'm giving. Look what I'm doing. When they would fast, they would beat themselves. Oh, I'm fasting. Woe is me. Oh, God help me. Jesus says, when you fast, just wash your face and go on like it's another day. Whenever you're doing something for God, don't make it a big hoodoo about it. Do it privately and unto the Lord that he receives the blessings and then therefore he's going to give you the reward from him. What you do secretly, he will bless you openly. He says, don't act like the world. It's sad that too many times we bring in the same philosophies of the world into the church. Well, we have to operate this certain way. If you do this, we do this. If you hate those, we hate them too. If you love them, we love them too. That's the way the world operates. We don't operate that way. We love everybody. We watch everybody. We all have our own weaknesses that we came from. When you struggle with sin... You don't have to go out and minister to that sin to try to get better. In other words, if you're struggling alcoholic, you don't go to the bars to witness because surely you will fall. If you're struggling with drugs, I don't want you working the streets trying to get druggies back into church because, well, you're going to help them. That's great. Pray for them first until you know that you are solid. Otherwise, you'll get sucked back into it. The devil knows how to play it. He's played people for thousands of years. And we get sucked into it all the time. He says, I want you to do what is right. I want you to love those around about you. Do kind to those that are around you. When your wife irritates you or your husband irritates you, don't take it personal. Love them anyway. They have maybe had a bad day. They may not be spiritually where they need to be. And they're taking it out on you. That's okay. See, when you get cold in your spirit, you lash out at those that you love. Why? Because they're close to you. They get to see the real you. I remember growing up, my mom would come by me and she goes, you need to go pray. Shut up. No, I don't. I did. I wasn't where I needed to be with Christ. And it was reflecting in my attitude and my behavior. And when she'd say, you need to go pray, I didn't want to hear that. I knew where I was, I just didn't want to hear it. We never want to hear the truth. We always want to hear how good we're doing or how better we're doing, but we don't want to hear when we're doing something bad. And God says, even when you're doing something bad, I'm still going to love you. 
but I still want to help you. I want to fix you. I want to change your life. I want to bless you. Remember, God's ministry, Christ's ministry is very simple. God loves you. You need to repent and turn away from your sin, and he wants to bless you. Three basic things. Everywhere Jesus went, he would heal people. And there multiple times he'd heal somebody and go, now go back to the priest and take care of that if you're a leper and give the offering that you need to do and don't tell anybody. And they'd get up and they'd go, they'd go to the priest and what they do, they told everybody. Why? Because Jesus said, I don't want you to tell everybody. I want the Father to receive the glory. God has healed me. God the Father has blessed me. And they say, oh Jesus, he's the one that touched me. And more would come. See, what you do in secret is what God's going to bless. And the flip side of that is this. If you sin in secret, God's going to reward you openly for it. If you sin in secretly, God's going to punish you openly. The whole world will know what you're doing. So get a hold of your private time and keep it holy and righteous so that God can bless you holy and righteously. Don't act like the world because all it will do is destroy you. We watch time and time again of ministers and Christians falling to the wayside because they didn't take care of their private life. We have to take care of our private life so that God can reward us openly. Do good in our private life. One man writes, it is our character and the true acts of a character is to see what we do when no one's looking. That tells others who we really are. If you're willing to serve God when nobody else is looking, then it's easier to serve God when they are looking. Be like your father. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 3, But when you do your charitable deeds, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. That your charitable deeds may be in secret, and that your father who sees in secret, will himself reward you openly. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. You ever done that? I've done it lots of times. Totally by accident. When you shave by feel, you feel and then you shave. And sometimes your left hand doesn't know what your right hand is doing and you'll nick your left hand. Oh, can't do that. Why it gets too fast. It gets in its way. Your left hand not knowing what your right hand is doing. He says when you give, that's the way it should be. Your left hand should know what your right hand is doing. It's happening so fast that your hand is doing it and the other one's going, well, what am I supposed to do? Don't worry about it. When you're helping somebody out, you help them out. You don't worry about who's watching or who's going to give you praise. Because that's not what you're doing it for. You're doing it to help. And God will bless them abundantly. And God will bless you abundantly. When you go to somebody's house and just help them out with their yard or painting their house or working around their house or just helping somebody out. God will bless you. Don't make a big to-do about it. You don't go back to church, oh yeah, I was busy this week. I was helping sister so-and-so. I was really helping them out. That's your reward right there. When people go, oh, good job. I don't want people's reward. I want God to bless me. I want the reward from God. To be more like your father, willing to help all that is around you, that he may bless you abundantly and bless you and open. He tells us, Love, bless, do good. Pray for others. Be perfect 
like your father. That's a hard one to swallow, to be perfect like your father. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, he says, Therefore, you shall be perfect just like your father is in heaven. When we do these things according to his word, we become perfect. You hear people all the time say, well, nobody's perfect. Your father in heaven is. And when you act like him, you are perfect for that moment. You're doing what he's asked you to do. You're being like your father in heaven. To be perfect like him. Keep your charitable deeds private. That God may reward you openly. Be like your father in heaven. Aren't you glad God doesn't go around saying, well, I helped pastor out last week and I did this for you this past week and I did this for Johnny last week. He doesn't do any of that. He just helps us out. We know that he's there. And then we give him praise. Lord, thank you for helping me. He doesn't make a big to-do about it. He's just there to help. He says, I want you to be like your father in heaven. Just helping out. Being there. Oh, we can complain. But does God complain? No. Does God make deals? Well, if I do this for you, you got to do this for me. No. He's just there to help. And he wants us to be there to help. Whenever we can, we help out. We help in the food closet. We help in other ministries around the church. Why? We're not there to get paid. We're not there to to let people know, oh, look what I'm doing. I'm working really hard. We just do it. Why? Because it's not unto others, it's unto him. To be like our Father. To be patient with others. To care for others. To share the gospel. To bless those that hate us. To do good to those that curse us. To pray for those that spitefully use us and persecute us. Jesus is hanging on the cross. They have nailed him. They have whipped him. They have beat him. And now he's dying. And Jesus looks down at the guards and says, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. Even on the cross, he's showing compassion to others. Those that are ridiculing him and cursing him and crucifying him, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. To be like our Father in heaven, to be like our Christ. Even though they persecute you and come against you, Lord, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. They're not smart enough yet to understand. But we still love them, Lord. To be like your Father? Is that who you want to be? Do you want to be like your Father? In heaven? To show the compassion the caring, the mercifulness, the gentleness, the long-suffering, and the peace for those around about you. In other words, not getting upset every time somebody gets mad. Walking away with it. Not worrying about how other people act. Just keep smiling and loving them. Being like our Father. I want you to bow your heads with me today. If that's you this morning, I want you to pray with me. Jesus, help me to be more like my Father. Lord, that I can love my enemies. That I can bless those that curse me. That I can do good to those that hate me. That I can pray for those who spitefully use me use me, and persecute me. Lord, that I will not do my charitable acts for show but do them in secret to honor you. That I may bless those around about me and Lord, that I can be more like my Father. Lord, that you will bless me and reward me openly. 
that I will work behind the scenes, O oh Lord, to whatever you ask. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. We thank you for tuning in this week. Drop us a line. Let us know that you're listening. Tell others about your Father in heaven. Share the gospel of Jesus Christ. God loves you. He asks you to repent. And he wants to bless you. God bless you and we'll see you next week.